Connections. It's Wednesday, August 18th, 21. Thank you for continuing to pursue God. You are here because you desire to be a follower of Christ. I too share that passion, desiring to follow Jesus for the very rest of my days. It's not easy. I commend you for being here and building the discipline to accomplish just that. So let's get started. God's glory made, pre <laughs> made uh, uh, reflected, made available through Jesus Christ, who walked amongst us, who offered friendship and knit us into his family. But there's so much more. So this week we are focused on the so much more. We witnessed over the last several weeks Jesus speak on a couple of occasions of why he felt compelled to stop and share a word of encouragement, share the gospel message with the crowd. And as he looked out and surveyed this gathering of people, he said, they're like sheep without a shepherd. As we develop God's eyes to see, as we allow him to sculpt a new perspective and our eyes are opened up and we scan across the masses, we too can see that they're like sheep without a shepherd. And you know what sheep truly are looking for? A shepherd. You know who else knows that sheep are looking for shepherds? The devil himself. The world. The world offers all types of shepherds, promises as sheep look for something to follow. In our social media today alone, it's about collecting followers. People follow celebrities, they follow politicians. They follow trends. They just are looking for the place to belong. They want the protection that comes from sharing of some sort of belief system. There's not really a whole lot of concern of what it's cobbled together with just that there's others that are following. Sheep have always recognized that there's strength in numbers, a sense of security, a place of belonging. And unfortunately, that is what's captivated the hearts of the world. Not only in Jesus's time, but in our time. And that's what we're up against. Jesus is revealing himself in all of his glory in hopes that we will respond and recognize that there's only one good shepherd. There's only one way forward. If we're fortunate enough to get to a to our 40s and 50s, our eyes are, are likely more prone to be open because we have followed many different shepherds over our lifetime. And one after another after another have been proven false. When we needed them the most, they were not there where they led us into danger and peril. 
The safety and security that they promised was empty. If we are fortunate enough to live through those experiences, we recognize a good shepherd from a poor shepherd. That's my prayer for everyone who is currently following a bad shepherd. Let them reach the dead end quickly, Lord, so that they might turn and recognize you for all that you are. We are smushing, so I don't want to deprive you of the full message here found in John 10. We are smushing together the I am statement of being a gate and the good shepherd. And it is a rather lengthy passage. I encourage you to, to read the entire thing. But they are related in that Jesus is looking at bad shepherds and relating to the crowd that has gathered his purpose and the contrast between a bad shepherd and a good shepherd. Hired hands versus the only shepherd. John 10, verse 7, Therefore Jesus said again, Very truly I tell you, I am the gate for the sheep. All who have come before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep have not listened to them. I am the gate, and whoever enters through me will be saved. They will come in and go out and find pasture. The narrow path, the narrow gate, the only way to be saved. All other shepherds, all other seeming paths to follow out of this place are false. Jesus stands and announces it so. If you want to be saved this way, follow me. You'd want to believe that if someone said that to a, a, a gathering of sheep, a gathering of people, that they'd pay attention. But the devil's scheme is to add as much chaos and noise so that when the gospel message is shared, it's drowned out by all the other distractions. It feels discouraging to be one voice in the wilderness while all the other noise is going on. But that's what we're called to do. This way, follow me as I follow Christ. I know the way out. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I have come that they may have life and have it to the full. We spoke last week of the emptiness that truly is found in the freedom offered by the world. That the fullness is offered in a life with God. Live long enough and we have some comparison. And when we step into the fullness of God, why didn't I do this sooner? Why didn't anyone tell me? And then we reflect, oh, well, I was told many times. I chose to go my own way. We praise God that we are on the right side of the gate. But I pray we would remain there. I pray that we would remain patient for those that God is still drawing to him. Continuing 11, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. The hired hand is not the shepherd. It does not own the sheep. So when he sees the wolf coming, he abandons the sheep and runs away. Then the wolf attacks the, the flock and, it scatter, and scatters it. And the man runs away because he is a hired hand and cares nothing for the sheep.
we who profess to be followers of Christ need to be very careful that we are not becoming followers of hired hands that have been hired by the devil himself to distract and destroy. If your political party is more important than your relationship with God, or somehow you have taken your political party and clothed God in it, beware. There is none but God, only one shepherd. You're called to trust. If you hold a company of the highest esteem and trust every word that they speak or follow a celebrity and dress and, and act as they do, you're being led astray. There's only one God. There's only one way. I wish as I surveyed the crowd made up of people professing Jesus and those who do not have relationship, I wish that it was just the people in the crowd that didn't have a relationship that were being distracted and drawn away. That same spirit is, is too prevalent within the walls of the church within the body of Christ. I pray that our brothers and sisters would break free and they could recognize the good shepherd over the bad ones. Those that will run for the hills whenever we are tested versus the one that stays at our side and guides us through. Our world is broken, and that tends that brokenness tends to seep into the the body and destroy from within. We need to be on watch. And we need to allow God to examine our hearts each and every day, and make sure that we are still following directly in his steps for his glory. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we love you. We desperately need you. We thank you, Lord, that you are the good shepherd, that you are here forever, and that you lay your diet life down for us, that you did lay your life down for us. You gave your life for us beyond our comprehension that the creator of all things would lay his life down. We will never appreciate or understand the magnitude of your sacrifice until the day we are brought home. Until then, Lord, help us appreciate you more. Help us have eyes to see as you examine our hearts where we've been led astray. We've become followers of man instead of followers of God, followers of trends. Of followers of you. Do the work necessary in our hearts today, Lord, to restore us so that we can be fully engaged in you. Not preaching the gospel of man, but preaching your gospel. The one truth. Help us love more extraordinarily. In Jesus' precious name, amen. All right, another one in the books. Go and make this day incredible. 
and allow God to examine your heart in areas that you still need to be improved. We are all works in progress. But remember, someone's following after you and you will be held accountable for those who will follow after you. They are led astray. So even more reason to align yourself with God. Know that I love you and I miss you and I'll see you back here tomorrow morning. I'll do it all over again. Till then, be good. Mm -hmm.